Hi there, I'm currently in the middle of rebuilding the suspension on my Morris Minor. I'm replacing all the bushes with uh, the poly bushes and also replacing a damper, the old one. In there was shot, it did not dampen, it leaked oil and it had play. So I've gotten rid of that. As you can see, I'm in the middle of doing this one. I've put the bushes in and cleaned out all the threads. And you can see back there, the torsion bar one has also been replaced. As I mentioned before, the damper on this one is out. The old busted one is here, it's pretty filthy. I've got the rebuilt one next door that I've just completed. I'll show you that later. These are all the new poly bushes. I got these from the Morris Minor Center in the UK because they cost a fortune if you buy them here in New Zealand. I've made a video previously on how to replace the torsion bar bushes on the Morris Minor, but that was a while ago, so I thought I'd make an updated one where I replace not only the whole entire front suspension bushes, but also the rear. We're in workshop number one right now, and this is the new uh, Armstrong damper, the passenger side one. I've just completely cleaned it up, uh, gave it a new coat of paint, polished it, um, drained the old oil, flushed it out and put new oil in it and soon we'll be good to go in the car. In the meantime, let's change all the bushes on the driver's side and just check the whole suspension over. I've got the car already lifted up, so you can see it's off the ground. Um, so let's first remove the wheel. There's probably a correct tool for this, but I don't have it, so I just use a claw hammer. And while you're at it, make sure you check the condition of the, um, the lug nuts, they're not stripped or damaged or anything. And then put them somewhere where you won't lose them. In this case, I'm just going to use this dirty old box. Alright, now hopefully everything is nice and clear. I've just clamped a little light up here, so you can see. But there is no need to remove the brake drum or anything like that. First, we want to unscrew this nut that holds uh, this piece to the damper and this has a uh, tab washer on it so you want to get a punch and tap it so then you can get the, the nut off. Make sure it might be a good idea just to clean any threads that are sticking out on this side so it doesn't damage it when you try to um, take it off if it's rusty or covered in dirt or paint or whatever. So let me do that now. This tab uh, washer here so we'll want to knock that out so we can take that off and clean any of those threads there. Now this part is under immense pressure, so make sure that thing doesn't come off when you take the nut off. It shouldn't do, but just something to take note of. And there you are, that's the nut, and that was the washer. Um, now this one got banged up quite a bit, so I do have a replacement. Now here comes the sketchy part. You now have to grab a jack and jack up the, the bottom of the kingpin, the piece that swivels on the bottom, I'll get a video later. So that is to release the pressure and therefore you can slide this piece off. As you can see, the jack is on uh, this piece. I forgot the name of it, I'll put it on the screen, but make sure it's actually sitting inside the jack and you're not pressing on this nipple or anything either. Make sure this doesn't slip off. Right, now you just want to jack it up slightly to release the pressure. Sorry, forgot to hit record, but now this piece will now separate off, the, um, off this pin that connects to the damper. So we can either just get it started with a hammer and tap it. Best to use a mallet, but I don't have one, so I'm just going to do that. I'm poor, so just use what I have, and then you can lever it off, lever it off of a screwdriver. There we go. Now it's free. Um, now we can let the jack down. And we could also remove all these old bushes. 
this is not a small job and your hands will get very dirty as well as the parts are going to get very dirty so make sure you have some kind of solvent I've got some brake clean so um, yeah and a, and a rag now when we let the jack down we want to make sure not to put any pressure on this brake line so just make sure it's not going to pivot away or whatever As you can see, it's all the way, to, all the way down, and the brake line isn't under tension. Um, the, the smarter thing would have probably to get some sort of bungee cord and tie that around there. So uh, yeah, well, that wasn't very smart of me. All right, I have got a bungee cord tied around the kingpin, so then it doesn't uh, put any pressure on this, and um, it's just sitting on the jack. Not the jack isn't pressing up against it; it's just the whole thing sitting on it. Uh, this is why I don't do this for a living. I'm not a professional. Now, uh, before I get on to the next part, I'll just remove the damper because I want to take that off and rebuild it like the other one. I'll do that off camera and I'll show the process later in the video after we do all this. Okay, it's about 10 minutes later. I have the driver's side damper out. Um, that one is all good. There's no problems with that. It's not leaking. It's still dampening fine. No play, nothing like that. Um, all it needs is a good clean and a flush out and a, um, a new oil and just clean it up a little bit of paint etc. But first I'll clean up this area of some brake clean just to get rid of all this disgusting grease and whatnot. Okay, so I'll just soak it generously in brake clean. Should get everywhere. All right, now I'll just get a, a rag. Wipe it off. I'll get my compressor and blow out all those holes with a screw uh, where those bolts go in. There we go, nice and clean. Right now, let's get back to this. Um, we'll just unscrew this uh, top piece. I forgot the name. Put it up on the screen. and the little boot as well. I'll just keep that on the side. Now there's not much you actually need to do this to this. All I did for the other side was just clean it off, brake clean, blast out, and then put the new bushes in. So I'll do that soon. The next step is take this tie bar off. Then we can separate that piece over there. Uh, also forgot the name of this. I'll put it up on screen. I did not prepare very well. But that's actually a stamp piece. It uh, goes together in two pieces. So, take this off, separate this, and then we can change the bushes over there by the torsion bar, uh, obviously cleaning everything in the, in the process. This tie bar is kind of tricky to film while, um, while working, uh, but what you need to do is, there's a split pin that goes to that, um, that nut, so take that split pin out, and screw that, and this thing will just pop right off, and uh, also take this side off, then you can just remove it. That's just a normal uh, bolt and a nut and a spring washer. There we go, it's out. And here are the old uh, rubber bushes. They're actually in really good condition. But uh, I'll add them to the pile. And uh, try to keep the, all the parts together, then you won't lose them. So I've just screwed that nut back on and those washer thingamajigs. And we'll just add this to the box of parts. Right, now time to separate this lower piece. Um, there's a nut here. Same on the other side, so you want to get a socket on that and a wrench on the other side and just take that side off. Then you want to take that thing off, a nut on that side, that's just a bolt basically. And there's also another bolt up there. And then that one there, you might have some difficulty taking that one off. A nut on either end, but the other side goes into a cup, which slots into the other side of that, which then connects to the torsion bar through some splines. You'll see what I mean when I take it apart, so if you're doing this, make sure you watch the whole video. And as a reminder, it wouldn't be a bad idea just to clean off all the threads and the top of the nut with a, this a wire, wire cup thing or whatever with a, on a drill before you try to take them off. You probably can't see anything, but... Cool, and this piece is out. Now there is a little rectangular washer thing in here, so make sure you get that out as well. And a spring washer on the other side. So the spring washer came off pretty easily. The other one might need some persuasion. And as usual, 
I'll put everything together and uh, so I don't lose it. Obviously I'll clean this up later because this is pretty filthy but in the meantime make sure you don't lose everything. Now time for the last bolt. Uh, just remove that one over there and uh, now we need to remove that one over there. Oh, that brake line is just barely covering it but that one there. Now that one actually came off um, in some cases like when I did the other side this wouldn't come off when I turned the nut it actually turned the whole um, bolt. In that case you'll probably just have to um, separate it without uh, separate this side and then tap this uh, cast side of this um, suspension arm backwards and then hold on to it somehow then you can take it off uh, or just yeah <laughs> you'll have to figure something out yeah but now let's take uh, this stamp side of this suspension arm I'm gonna call it or whatever the proper name is up on the screen here probably that name uh, off. Separate of a screwdriver. This is not under any tension anymore because uh, again the top of the that trunnion I think that's what it's called is off so the torsion bar is just hanging there. Uh, yep that's off. Make sure we keep that in a safe place into that box of parts. Alright, sorry I'm back. Um, I just had to install the damper on the other side, otherwise I can't really turn the steering because the other side's also kind of dangly, uh, but the other side's all good now. Now here comes the sketchy part. We have to remove this kingpin off from that, uh, this piece, this uh, lower suspension arm thing, but we also don't want this to dangle, and that thing will clearly not hold it, so here's my redneck solution. Just put on a bucket. Alright, sometime later. I've got this kingpin thing off of that. Off of the car side of this uh, suspension arm. It was this pin that was in there. And I couldn't actually get this out because unfortunately this side had actually screwed in to that. So therefore it was actually, you know, tight against that and it was a bloody pain to get out. Luckily the damage, uh, the threads aren't too, too damaged. So I think we'll be all right, but worst case scenario, I hope you get another one of these. And uh, yeah, the whole thing is just on a bloody bucket, it's very redneck, but as long as this isn't hanging, we should be good. Now, um, my main camera over there is just about to die, so I might have to film the rest of this on my phone. But what we want to do now is we want to tap this back, this arm. This arm actually just sleeves over this torsion bar, and there's some splines here. You can't see it because it's so disgusting and covered in paint or whatever I'll put a picture up on screen the other side what it's supposed to look like but what we want to do is we want to tap this back making sure it doesn't it does not come off the splines otherwise you'll lose the setting and then that will reveal that cup that's actually a cup so that's the bush there let me try this again for pointer that is the bush that's the other side of the bush it's kind of busted and that's actually a cup and then this bolt goes through it and it's smooth on the middle and then it's got threads on the other side and that thread uh it's got a nut on the end and there's a cup in there so what we want to do is that cup just kind of seats into this metal cast arm so we want to tap this back making sure and make sure that, that doesn't fall off to reveal that cup then we can swing the torsion bar out of the way and take that out and clean it up and replace the bushes so let's do that now Still got a little bit of juice left in the camera, so let's get this done with, and then I'm going to leave the rest for another day. I'm very, very tired. Now we want to tap this back. Alright, there we go. You can see those splines and the slots over it. And once you get uh, this piece off that cup, this thing will just pivot out of the way. Now, we, because that side is off, we can just pull the side out. 
and you can see here what I mean by that cup it's just a cup uh, and a bolt that bolt just looks like this uh, like that and with the cup on one side and the nuts except that one's a little bit thinner this is a fat one and yeah we want to make sure that those don't come off the spline so I'll push that back now um I did have to put a screwdriver in here and kind of pry it because if you can see that nut actually sticks out ever so slightly past that cup so it might catch on this when you're trying to take it off or the torsion bar so just be careful that uh, with that um, and make sure nothing comes this thing doesn't come undone or anything like that but yeah now we'll just push that out of the way and then tap the this bolt out from the from that side out push the torsion bar out of the way and tap that thing out Again, ideally you should be using a, a mallet but so you don't ding up the ends of the sort of threads but I don't have one it's gonna be a bit gentle there we go and it's out put this somewhere safe because we'll clean it up before we put back in all right hopefully that's a good shot I'm just using my phone as a torch but you can see these Bushes now come out of this eye bolt. Might take a bit of persuasion. Get a screwdriver. Because we're not going to be reusing these anyway. Get the whole thing out. There we go. And you can see this one's pretty torn up. I mean, it's not worn through or anything, but it's pretty not good. This one looks almost perfect but now let's just clean everything up with brake clean clean the inside of that if you have a compressor you can also blow it out Shop number one. It's a massive mess in here. I'm building another motorized bike and whatnot. Anyway, uh, here's that piece that came from the torsion bar eye bolt, whatever you call it. I'm not going to bother removing that because that's actually locked tight in place. I did this last time, almost two years ago now, or yeah, thereabouts. So I'm just going to clean this up on the wire wheel and clean up some brake clean. Get all that paint off, and yeah, it's good to go. Just as a note, make sure all your threads are clean. As you can see, this one's not very, there's a few specks in there, and those are actually quite gritty. So what you want to do is just grab like, a, I don't know, a nail maybe, a fine, uh, know, a fine needle, and just kind of scrape it out. And then I like to get brake clean and blast it out for a compressor. Okay, installation is literally the reverse of uh, dismantling. Uh, let's just get this back in with the new bushes and stuff. We can lubricate the bushes and put everything together. Uh, I can't do everything today because obviously I haven't redone the, the damper. I'll let you know when the best time is to put the damper in if you do have it off. Otherwise, you won't be able to get <laughs> the kingpin top trunnion thing back in. Uh, don't ask me how I know that. But uh, I'll give you more information about that later. But first, let's just put the lower bushes in and then we'll call it, call it a day. Because uh, it's actually getting pretty late and it's raining. If you bought the kit, it's the red ones, I think. I uh, just popped them in. They fit nice and firmly. Push the torsion bar down. Cool, sweet, as you can see. Now, I like to lubricate them with some silicon spray. Uh, this is made for bushes. Spray a generous amount in there. And a little bit on the shaft. 
and that will just push it. All right, easy. Right now, you just want to push that over and slip that cast part of this uh, suspension arm over that cup. All right, now we're in the other workshop. It's the next day, actually. And uh, now I'll just drain the oil out of this and uh, clean it up and give it a bit of paint, polish it up, and this one's good to go back in. Refill the oil, obviously. All right, I just got the cover off. It's, yeah, it's pretty disgusting. I mean, it works fine, but uh, I mean, yeah, it dampens, as you can see. The oil smells pretty yuck. And uh, yeah, it's pretty black, so we'll drain that. I'll take the plug out, have a catch can underneath. I'll tip that out into a, into a um, container and then I'll work that back and forth while that drains out of the bottom as well. All right, that bottom bottom is out, so now if I, you can see when I turn the, that, it, um, it leaks out. When taking that bolt out, it will look like this. And this piece comes out. There's also a spring on the inside and there should also be like a little washer but I don't know why this one's missing. Make sure you take that all out. The spring was inside so I just used one of these to kind of pick it out. And yeah, now I'll just work this back and forth and drain all the oil out. Alright, the Armstrong shock is all uh, rebuilt. Um, I didn't really get much footage, but uh, the oil is flushed, cleaned everything out with brake clean, rinsed it down, blasted it all out, put that uh, bolt back and all the springs and stuff in the correct order, and wire brushed everything nice and clean. So, and I've also polished this up so this is nice and shiny. What I want to do now is, uh, as you can see, mask this off, so I want to get a coat of paint on here. All right, I have the rest of the damper blanked off with a rag. So I'll just grab some of this black spray paint, enamel, whatever, nothing fancy, and just give it a coat and uh, let it dry. All right, we have the bolts here, they're nice and clean. And these are the tabs that, and these are the tabs that lock the bolts in. I've just flattened them with a hammer and cleaned them up. They seem to be fine, so I'll reuse them. And yeah, I'm gonna call it a day here. Not much progress done today, but we'll come back tomorrow. Right, it's the next day. Uh, the paint on this is all dry. So I'm gonna pop this damper back into the car now. These are the damper bolts. Um, I'm just gonna put a bit of anti-seize on the threads before I screw them in. And make sure not to forget these because you wanna bend them over so they lock the, the bolts in so they don't come loose from vibration. And make sure to line it up with the holes that it was in before you took it out of the car. First, just start them by hand, make sure they go in. They're not cross-threaded or anything. Now there is a torque stick for these, um, so I'll put it up on the screen, I can't remember. But I just do it so it's very tight. Not too tight, but just reasonably tight. And I want to make sure that one face of the bolt is flat facing up or if down, so then I can bend that tab washer flat on top of that bolt. So these are quite tight, basically as tight as I can reasonably get it with a hand ratchet. As you can see, the top of that is flat, with the top of that, and the bottom of that is also flat. Therefore, I can bend these over and they can rest on top of them. So I'll just get a hammer and a punch and punch them down firmly.
I've just gotten the sump pan off. Uh, you can see it's pretty filthy and sludgy and disgusting. Uh, I don't know, it's like chunks in there or something. There's, yeah, there's a, I don't know what that is, that's kind of flaky. And it's not a good sign. <laughs> it's quite abrasive too. <laughs> yeah, interesting anyway. Yeah, those are the seals that go in the end. And those are the nuts and washers. Alright, I'm underneath the car. This might be a bit tricky to film. But that's the engine up there. And it's quite sludgy. And that pickup screen's got a lot of contaminants in it. So the oil filter is clearly doing its job. That screen and the screw one, one with the conversion kit over there. So yeah, I'm just going to do my best to clean all that sludge out. Clean that pan out and give it a bit of paint. And that gasket looks okay, so I'm not going to touch that. Here's a better view. So thankful I have this wide angle lens. And what all that's about. And it's quite sludgy. Like all that, I can truly eee, the grease. It's not good. It's about half an hour later and I've cleaned this as best as I can. I've cleaned off the greaser with water, with a ton of brake clean and scrubbed and uh, scrubbed it very aggressively and wiped everything down and cleaned it for a wire wheel. I think it's as good as it's going to get. I flattened out the things on the bottom just by putting it on the floor and banging it on the other side for a large block of wood and a hammer. I think it's good enough. There's none of that sludge that was in here before. Previously I did this and I could collect a whole ton. So this is a massive improvement. I'm just going to hit it with a coat of paint. Right, now let's get back to doing the suspension. I've already cleaned out all these parts, such as the upper trunnion and all these pieces and nuts and stuff as well as the stamp side of the lower wishbone and also the tie bar um, now we want to get the upper trunnion on um, just to recap on where we left off we've already put the bushes down on the bottom we only have one side of the lower wishbone on so now let's just clean these threads on the kingpin and then we'll grease them and then we'll put them on and we'll assemble the rest of the suspension Use a generous amount of solvent, brake clean. Again, you can blast this out with a compressor if you want to. Now you want to go grab some grease. In this case, I'm just going to use the right out of the grease gun. And you want to add a generous amount here and pre-lubricate inside there. This would also be a good time to check that this nipple is working. Uh, this is where you would normally grease it for maintenance. And make sure the tip of your grease gun is not dirty. And again, I'm not a professional because I forgot to put this piece on, so I'm just kind of smear that grease off. Nope, and again, I'm not a professional, put it on backwards. It's this way. And let's just put that grease back on. And now we'll just screw this upper trunnion onto the kingpin thread. It should go on very smoothly with no, with no hesitation whatsoever. And we want to screw it right to the bottom, and there we go, it's bottomed out. And I like to grab a cable tie, just put around that boot, so then it doesn't come off. Doesn't move around and stuff like that. We go just tuck around back, just to make it look a bit nicer. Not that it really matters. We'll just get a few squirts of grease through the nipple. Now we can get our poly bushes in. They just press in. Now this is very important, when we screw this, you can see it bottoms out here. We want to, we don't want to leave it like that, because then you won't get the full range of motion, so you want to, wherever it bottoms out, just screw it back one turn. And that's the position it should be in. Alright, let's get it on, so... Oop. Damper. This, um, this pivot pin thing. There's nothing on it. And I've already cleaned those threads, that's why I've put that tape over it. Nice and clean. Get some of that silicon spray I like to use. Now I'll just lift this on. Okay, I have the upper trunnion on the pivot pin of the damper. So now we need to put the nut and that tab washer on. So first, so first one of these goes on. Now I can't actually determine which side it is. Uh, you can see it's it's got a lip on one side, it's taller than the other. 
and then some pictures I've seen these are actually just a flat disc they don't actually have any variations so probably doesn't really matter which side you put it on so I'm just gonna do that then you wanna put this tab washer on to lock it this is a brand new one because the old one got banged up so if you are doing this it would be a wise idea to get a new one alright sorry I'm back for some reason this one didn't fit very well didn't want to go on so I just had to uh, file it ever so slightly and now it fits on very nicely but you can see this might be a good time to bend them over so then it's a bit easier to tap in and make sure you bend them so when it's on it because you can see the flat side is in here it might vary the, the one on the other side the flat part was actually on the top and make sure you bend them so from, you can access them from the top and bottom because you might be able to get a punch from, from behind so we'll just put that one on and now if you have some grab a bit of anti-seize and just put a generous amount on those threads so they don't corrode or whatever so that it can come off next time you need it to right and here goes the nut I've also put a little bit inside and I've also cleaned this nut out so the threads are nice and clean and this should screw on very effortlessly now there's probably a right size a socket or wrench for this but I'm just using this adjustable one you want this uh, to be nice and snug And you just want to check both sides of the bushes, make sure you're not binding or anything like that. And again, you want to have it so the flat side is on the top. Cool. And that's perfect. Now I'm just going to get a hammer and tap it in. There we go. As you can see, the top is knocked down over the nut. And so is the bottom. So as you can see, I've removed the bucket because that is now supporting the rest of the kingpin and therefore not putting any pressure on this brake line. Uh, breakers I mean. Now we have to put the lower trunnion into the wishbone and this part is a bit tricky because again this is a torsion bar so it's on the tension we have to jack it up but we don't have that point to jack up on the jack anymore so we have to kind of jack it up here at an angle being careful not the jack doesn't slip off and we'll just get this fulcrum pin in. One side will go through here, the other side will go through the stamp side and uh, then we can put the uh, lock washers, spring washers and the nuts on. It would be a good idea to clean that out while you can and just pre-lube it for a ton of grease. Okay, hopefully you can get a good view of that. First we just want to clean everything out. Right, now we'll just grab that pin and again this is all been cleaned and the threads have been cleaned and whatnot. Grease it up real good and we'll just pop it in. And these go on either side, there's two of them, so that will slip over there like so. And then this rubber sealing ring will go over it, and that will create a seal so dirt doesn't get in. Same thing on the other side of that pin. So let's get that on the other side of the pin first, because now we have to jack up that lower wishbone. As you can see, that uh, thick washer thing is on with that rubber seal, and now we have to jack up this thing. So that, uh, that hole lines up with it, and we can slip it in. Just keep your fingers clear just in case it does snap back or anything. This is all very nerve wracking. And now we'll get this lower um, stamp side of the wishbone on. Make sure you don't put it around the wrong way. There's a square mark there, that's for where the tie bar mounts to. Washer and nut on as soon as I can. With the jack still pressing up against it, uh, you have to put this in in order to clamp the two halves together otherwise if you let go there will be pressure on it and you'll never get uh, close them together this is the piece that the tie bar mounts to so again that square washer goes first do the whole spring washer and nut right now we can let the jack down we want to let this down slowly and gently Perfect. So now you want to get the bolt at the back. And again, you can put Loctite if you want. And now for the final nut. And now the last piece is the tie bar. Now to do the tie bar, so first just get any of one of those two washers, put it on. It would help if the camera was in focus. Then you get your bush. 
oh, put it on. And now this will go through that hole in the back and the bush will go on the other side followed by the other washer and the nut and the slip pin. So I'll do that now. All right, the tie bar is in place, the nut and the split pin in place, as you can see. Now we just want to kind of just get that in there, tap it in until it lines up with the hole. It's not quite lined up, so we'll just get like a round object and just align it. We'll just get our bolt and nut and washer and put it in the usual order. And congratulations, you have rebuilt the front suspension in your Morris Minor. All the bushes are replaced and now you know how to put the damper back. It's getting late and I have school tomorrow so I'm call it a day here. Okay, now it's time to do the rear suspension. Obviously first you want the vehicle up on jack stands. I have the wheel removed already, but when placing the jack stands, you do not want to place them where you would normally put them here, on the rear axle. Instead, put them here, on the sill. Make sure you put it on a solid piece of the car, and you don't put it on the floor, because this piece is actually structural. And once you have it like this on both sides, make sure you give the car a good shake, and it shouldn't move at all. This would also be a good time to adjust your brakes and check them over. Uh, this one is not adjusted very correctly. The handbrake is off and it's very tight, so I need to loosen the tensioner. I must have done a poor job last time. Now we just want to support the bottom of the spring before we take the nuts off. Otherwise the rear axle will just fall down and nothing will be holding it. I'm just gonna use a jack, lightly rest it in the middle, just on the middle part over there, between the U-bolts. I'm not actually jacking it up, just resting it on there. And now you just want to remove all of the nuts. There's two on each side, as you can see, and those plates will come out. For the front, there's a nut only on one side, the other side is flat. It would be a good idea just to use a, um, a wire cup on the drill and clean up those threads like I did with the other nuts. Otherwise, we may risk damaging them. This one's got paint and all sorts of stuff on it, so I'll have to. Let's start with the rear ones first. Alright, I have three of the four nuts out. Usually, if I can take all the nuts out, I'll just use a screwdriver and pop these plates off. Or I can just use my hand if they're loose enough, like the one at the back. And I do the same for the other side. Unfortunately, this nut is done up so tight that I can't actually take it off, even with a nut on the other side tightened. So, I'm just going to lever this one out. Okay, just levered it out. This pin is actually new when I did the suspension last time. And as you can see here, these are the old rubber bushes. I mean, they're still in fairly okay condition. It's just the edges are quite torn up. But yeah, I'm glad I'm doing this. They're not worn through or anything. So we'll just take all that to the workshop next door and I'll clean off all the threads on the wire wheel as well. Actually, I take that back. This one is just about to wear through. I'm lucky I did this at the right time. This is actually quite uh, shocking because this car, I did the suspension less than two years ago when I got it and I just put regular rubber bushes in. I wasn't as educated back then. Luckily the pin has no damage, so that's good. We need to extract the bushes from the back as well. Didn't actually film this earlier. These ones are really destroyed, so it's a bit more tricky. Okay, I can't actually get this out. Now time to do the front one. Again, clean off the threads with a wire cup or whatever, and then undo the nut, and then with this one, you can just tap it straight out. There is no nut on the other side. You'll see what I mean when I get it out. I'll try to show you with the camera now. Might be able to see that. As you can see, it just taps right out.
Funny enough, this one's a different size. It's not 5 eighths, 9 sixteenths. But whatever. Now you don't want to undo it all the way. You want to leave the nut higher, slightly higher than the actual uh, thread itself. Then we can tap over hammer without damaging it. We need a bigger hammer. Here we go. That worked. Now we can just gently tap it out. It's just that initial blow that takes a bit of force. There we go. And it's out. And now, as you can see, what I mean, there's only a nut on one side compared to the ones on the back. Funny enough, I can still actually smell the silicon spray on it. Put a lot of silicon spray, just like I am about to do now, when I did the bushes on this two years ago, and I can still smell it when I took it out. We need to extract the bushes from the back as well. Didn't actually film this earlier. These ones are really destroyed, so it's a bit more tricky. I 100% withdraw my statement earlier about how they were not worn through. These are the ones at the back. That one looks like um, it's seen better days. One of them actually looks okay. Uh, this one is non-existent. It's just completely rigged. The front ones look just about perfect. So yeah, it's a bit bizarre. The ones on the other side were actually all just about looking like this. There was only one of them that started to flare out a bit, but it didn't wear through. So yeah, that's a bit odd. I wonder if it's a problem with the car or anything like that. Hopefully not. Anyway, let's clean these holes with brake clean and we'll get the new bushes in. Now, I'm not going to film the whole process of cleaning the, the holes of brake clean because it's pretty obvious you just get a rag cleaned around the surroundings but more importantly clean the inside. Here are the new bushes and as you can see there's four of them they are the same color and two others are a different color. And the color I believe just means they're different hardness. In this case it doesn't really matter but what does matter is if you compare them side by side the lip on one is thicker. The reason being is these ones go in the front, that one over there, because the gap between them is smaller. If you put these in, they won't fit. Therefore, these go at the back. So let's do that now. Spray a bit of silicone in it. The next time if I need to do this, it won't bind. I'll just spray some inside. all in as you can see very nice now I'll just seat the front of the spring back into the spring hanger I might use uh, the jack just to kind of assist me while I jiggle this back and forth and slowly tap it in and then I'll get the pin through and tighten the nut There we go, there's probably a proper torque spec for that, but I just got it to TAF. It wouldn't be a bad idea to use some Loctite, but I ran out, so that will have to do. Make sure you don't forget your spring washer before you put the nut on. That side is flat and flush with the rest of the spring hanger, and that's how we know it's seated in correctly. Now let's go do the back. And the other side as well. I'll get this done off camera, it's a bit difficult to do it with the camera in the way. It's just really tricky to film and do it at the same time. Now we just want to put the spring washer on, nut, same thing on the other side, and get a wrench on one side and the sock and ratchet on the other side and just tighten it until it's quite tight. And again, lock tight wouldn't be a bad idea. And yeah, you're done now. All the bushes have been replaced. Now wouldn't be a bad time to, again, check your brakes over. I need to adjust this one, this one is not adjusted correctly, it's very tight and it's binding. Yeah, check your damper, 
top the fluid up if it needs to or take it off and rebuild it or whatever. I've got some other jobs to do to this car but the suspension is all done now and uh, the next time you'll see me is when we go out on the road. So yeah, see you then.